Ned Lacombe, and I invite you to come and share with us on our celebration of this, the last Sunday after Pentecost, often referred to, and at least in our tradition, as Christ the King. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. So let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Daniel, which we are continuing on from our previous uh, week. This is from Daniel, 7th chapter verses 9 through 10 and 13 through 14. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. And as I watched in these night visions, I saw one, like a human being, coming from the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 93. 
The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up your voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Amen. Our New Testament passage is uh, taken from Revelations chapter 1, verse 4b through 8. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom of priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will, will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to be and to come, the Almighty. Our gospel for today is taken from the Gospel of John, the 18th chapter, verses 33 through 37. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own account, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. This is the gospel of the Lord, and so we give thanks to you, Lord Christ. Amen. What is it to be king? You know, one of the interesting things is you can travel around the world and find all kinds of tombs that have kings in them. In fact, if you go to China, there's all these dynasties and they buried all of their, their rulers, you know, in a kingly fashion. If you take and go to India, the same thing was done. And if you travel, oh, say into Russia, the czars were all entombed in beautiful places. Of course, Egypt with its pyramids, even the Mayans, and if we go into South America and Central America, how many places are there for the royalty that are burial sites and huge monuments to their life? They're everywhere. And if we go to England, at least where my ancestors came from, they're buried all over the place there. And one of the great places to be buried is in one of the great cathedrals there. Same is true with France, same is true with Germany, same is true with any place you want to look at. Kings of the earth, they come, they go. They're remembered, they're adored, they're reviled. They are human beings in a special place at a special time. But their kingdoms do not endure. And there's the difference. Jesus is asked about him being a king in his kingdom, and he plainly says, my kingdom's not of this world. Not of this world. And in fact, you can't point to a place on the face of this earth where Jesus is buried, can you? No one can find it. The archaeologists will never find it because it just 
simply isn't the case. So where is Jesus? He lived that 33 years of ministry on this earth, died a horrid death. If he's the king of this world, where is it? And where is he? Well, the truth of the matter is, his kingdom isn't of this earth. And I love that passage that we just read from Revelation. Oh, wow. You know, that whole account of Jesus showing up in heaven to take his place at the throne of God. Whoa, that's his kingdom. And yes, everything's been put underneath him. In another passage we had read actually last week, if you were to take note of it, it says that all of the kingdoms and all of this that is on earth was put as his footstool nonetheless. Wow, footstool. So we celebrate Jesus who is not a king of this world. But yet yeah, the world is his. Strange, isn't it? But we celebrate with great thankfulness that he has ascended and is where he is. You know, as a Christian... I don't mean to try to put anybody else's faith down. It's not what my intent is. But the truth is the truth is the truth. And I don't care where you are in the world. You would be hard put not to at least look at the magnificent uh, and absolutely uh, total grandeur of the universe beyond even what we see. They're saying now this universe is well beyond what we can even comprehend. How do you even take that into your head? And yet here we are, stuck on earth and thinking in worldly terms. And yes, we would like nothing better than to have a worldly king. Now, I got to tell you, even amongst the Jews, even amongst those in Israel, that had been the case for a very long time. The one thing that they didn't want was a vacancy at the top. Strange, but true. I mean, you got to remember that they went absolutely berserk trying to find somebody to and if you remember the story that the prophet Samuel went and anointed a guy named Saul who was king of Israel and things didn't go so well and there's a story and a legacy of that happening time and again King David who we're really familiar with to this day celebrated by Jews around the world as the great king of Israel for his time and yet Things didn't always go well for him either. He got himself in some really worldly stuff that really didn't set well with God. And when that was the case, his power diminished. But yet, the Lord took him into his heart because he was a man of God's heart. What does that mean? Well, that's another sermon for another day, I'm afraid. But for right now, let's stop and think about this. What is it to be king in this world? Man, that's a losing proposition if ever there was one. If you want to be a target, yeah, become a king, a queen, a royalty. My goodness gracious, you know, the a lot of the media this day and age are brutal with some, some of the royalty. Do they deserve it? Well, I'm not going to speculate on whether they do or don't. Because the fact of the matter is they're human beings when all said and done. You know what? They're subject to putting their shoes on just like you and I are. And when all is said and done, we have to remember that they, be, they be, are uh, subject to the same kind of conditions and situations that we are, health-wise, and so on and so forth. The things that happen in terms of the blessings and even the terrible tragedies in life, they're no, they're no stranger to that, no more than you and I are. Oh, they may have power. They may be able to wave their hand and command incredible things. They can put people to death back in the old days. They could just sentence you to perdition. They could put you in prison. They can ruin you. They can command whatever they want. They can tax you to death. They can do all of that. So anyways, when it all said and done, what is it to be a king or a queen or royalty in this world? Well, let me tell you, it's an awesome responsibility if it's used right, but it is diminished by the sheer fact of the matter that nothing surpasses the absolute majesty of God Almighty himself and his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we celebrate that today. Born in a manger in Bethlehem, 
a baby so terribly threatening that the then king of Israel, Herod, demanded that every one of the children his age be killed, every one of the males be killed so that he could be disposed of because he was a threat. A baby, a threat? Better believe it. That's how the world works, and that's what kingship is about. Now, here's the irony. He was despised, hated, and actually sought for death when he was a baby. It never changed, because as he stood before Pilate, this was exactly the same thing that was happening again. Oh, yeah. To be king of this world is no prize. But the kingship of Jesus surpasses that surpasses our understanding. You know, and I'm going to take it one more step because sometimes we just get so confused by things. The day will come when we'll meet him face to face. Everyone, good, bad, or otherwise, will stand before him. You know what? That's not to say anything is wrong where anybody else is concerned, but if you understand Jesus and the sacrifice he did in his position, you understand he is the Lord of everything. We don't have to make an apology for that. That's our proclamation. If people don't agree with it, can't accept it, that's their issue. But the truth is the truth as it's been presented to us. Jesus is the king of the universe. For as it says in that prologue from John, the first chapter, all things were created through him and nothing that was created was created but through him. How is that possible? because he pre-existed us and everything that we've seen, including the earth itself. That's the Jesus that we worship. Taken to another level, let me just simply say, because it took me a long time, I think probably up until my 20s or so, before I was finally able to understand that I really not only wanted Jesus and have him present, and see him as Lord and Savior, I made the big step of making him king of my heart. Thank God there's other people who know what I'm talking about. I'm not alone. I'm not some insane guy that's running around with some grandiose idea. There are many like myself who at some point in their life found their heart strangely warmed. By whom? By the Lord. So he is the king of my heart. I'm a terrible servant at times. I'm no prize. Gee, I sometimes wonder what in the world do you want with me? But you know what? For reasons that I don't even understand, just like my mother and my father, he loves me. I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't think I deserve it. But quite honestly, if you make him the king of your heart and the king of your life, what things will happen for you? All things are subjected to him, and all things come to him. For he is the king and the master of our souls, to which we give thanks. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who minister in the name of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the leaders of the nation, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the communities we live in, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For a seasonable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and affirm, for widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints of God, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. May the angels and saints of God keep watch over you, and the blessing, peace, and mercy of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, suffered.